Good day and welcome to another episode of Regional Review. I'm Kenya Kamboe, the Namibia Media Holdings correspondent in the northeastern regions. As you can see, we are by the mighty Kavango River. Okay, on today's show, we'll be sharing with you highlights of events that unfolded in the northeastern regions over the past week. Also, we have an interview with Mr. Sebastian Chamba, who will be telling us about 32 years independence, how far is development come in the Kavango regions. Meanwhile, in history, today is World Day for Water. So check out the next video. Welcome back to the new segment on Regional Review. On today's show, we are going to look at two stories. One is the one of the St. Boniface College hostel father who was attacked by about 16 learners late last year. The second story is about the Hambukushu Traditional Authority and the Environment and Tourism Ministry over the Bobwata National Park. Our first story is about 16 grade 11 learners from St. Boniface College who were found guilty of attacking a 39-year-old hostel father late last year. They severely injured the man after they allegedly kicked and beat him with brooms and stones. The learners also damaged the windows of the hostel father's room, which they stoned. The victim, Rafael Shapwa, who has since lost his job, is currently fighting the school through the Rundu Labour Office, saying that he was unfairly dismissed because of the fight with the learners. In our second story, we look at how the Ambukushu Traditional Authority expressed grievances towards the Environment and Tourism Ministry as far as the management of the Bobota National Park is concerned, saying that the ruling party nearly paid the price in the 2020 local and regional government elections following a threat by the Environment and Tourism Ministry to evict all livestock from the Bobota National Park weeks ahead of the elections. In the 2015 regional election, Swapo garnered 5,541 votes, but this was reduced to 2,995 in 2020. The traditional authority made the observation in a petition dated 6 November 2021 to Speaker of the National Assembly, Peter Kachavivi, in which it expressed grievances towards the Environment and Tourism Ministry as far as the management of the Bobata National Park is concerned. The, bobo- the bone of contention is that communal farmers from Ambukushu currently graze and keep their livestock in the national park while the line ministry is carrying out the 1999 cabinet directive that no cattle will be allowed in the national park or any other game park in the northeast of the country. This has since created tension between the two parties. In the petition, the traditional authority stated its case and indicated that the ministry's attempt to evict all livestock ahead of the 2020 local authority and regional council elections could have costed swap of votes. Jamba, we just celebrated 32 years of independence. 
looking at the situation in the Kabango regions, especially Kabango is where you are uh, based, what did you say? Are we independent? Are we, what's your view? Are we there? Are we where you, you expect us to be the two years after independence? Uh, yeah, happy independence Namibia to start with. Um, that this is a struggle that people actually um, put up their life in front with uh, guns. We stood up to fight for people. And then we managed to get political independence. But unfortunately, to economical independence, it's still a struggle that we're struggling with to get it right as a country. Being it, yeah, let's say, as a country, um, coming down to Kavango, the struggle here is even more real. Because if I have to reflect back, um, a few weeks ago, the president was uh, interviewed by Al Jazeera. Uh, if anyone who followed that interview can see that even our president cannot connect in terms of breaking down the economy, how it's supposed to be. Because he cannot say, we people don't need land. Like we, let's say we the black people, we the Namibia, we the natives who don't need land. And we can't claim the land back. Or people don't need land because they can't uh, do anything with it. We need jobs. Jobs from where? People need land to work the land. After working the land, that's how they create jobs. So black, white, or colored whatsoever, we're supposed to have land. Availability to land so that people can choose from there now. That is the logic. Uh, secondly, now coming down to Kavango, Kavango is still struggling really to move forward. This one, it has to do uh, if we reflect back, we can look at the representation, which is a very serious challenge. That we cannot, we cannot, we, we cannot sit far from the table and then we expect things to move. Nevertheless, we come down to the local authority. Local authority, the best thing that uh, 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 the direction that we need to take, to say the truth, all along we have been failing. These plans of borehole there, whatsoever there, that the government is trying by all means to bring now to the people, is a good move. But the local authorities, uh, the councillors, are supposed to come up with initiative, innovatives on how can they be able to uh, uh, bring development to their people in terms of uh, coming up with projects to produce food. Every house is supposed to have access to water. Every house is supposed to have projects such as uh, gardens uh, and, and as well as have other projects like in Gavango, we have a serious problem of table, chairs, desks in, in schools. So we have timber. Why can't we use? We have to train. This is not something difficult to, to be realized. We just need to train few youth, bring them on board, fund them, give them uh, all, all the resources that they need for them to produce table, desk and stuff. Councillors are supposed to compete on how many tables or chairs are we producing in our local constituencies per year. Because we can't talk about GDP, Namibia is rich GDP and stuff. No, we have to narrow this one down to the local level as to how do we want really to see, how do we want to really to show the indicators to show that we are really moving forward. How many cabbage did we produce per year? The agronomic board is doing so well that once we produce enough, they can close the border and then we need to uh, uh, buy our own products. That's the direction that we need to, to, to go. So I'm expecting that from uh, Mukwe and Dongalinena, uh, Mashare uh, uh, and so forth for the councillors really to come up even looking at the Kavango West as well to come up with innovative to produce we can't be consumers forever that is wrong, a very wrong approach that we are taking because being consumer forever is being slaves to other people forever we will be saying no, our GDP is good but how many of the products did we produce as the local people so that is a very serious concern that we really need to look at as we are going uh, from 32 years and, uh, and beyond, we need now to look at, at ourselves. What do we have? If we say Namibia is our country, we have our diamond, we have our oil. Who, who are producing things? Who are not producing things? We, we can't just be, 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 be laborers. We can't just be people who are touching things, but then we can't be, be able to, to own them. It's wrong as a people. That is how things are going to turn around to be, you know, to, for us to feel like as if we are left out in everything that is happening in this country. People who are coming from us are going to be better than us because we have nothing. With nothing at all. So uh, basically, uh, that is it. Okay, 32 years after independence, we have crocodile attacks, people for different reasons, either went there for leisure or simply just to fetch water. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the issue of uh, portable water? Uh, this is, has to do with the policy. Look at the uh, human life uh, conflict uh, policy. It's actually well documented. 
But the question must be, do our people, do our leaders understand that document or not? Uh, not too long ago, I engaged the Mahahe people when it comes to, before I even come to the crocodile, the river, the, about the elephant issue. The elephant issue, I engaged the, I sent a letter, a very beautiful letter to the, to the, to the, to the Honorable Governor for Kavang West, where I presented to her, I actually narrowed it down the whole idea on how can we deal with this uh, women and, uh, human and, 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 and wildlife conflict. That document is well documented. Uh, Mr. Muhai is also aware of that letter because he's the councillor of uh, Mankumpi constituency. I presented to them that document, where, uh, that letter, where I said those people they need to be, they, 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 need, they, they need to pay for their for their loss that they are going through. Elephant can just come and eat their things. They're not sleeping and all those kind of thing. And then and those same people, they they lack basic services. We are supposed to in that same po uh, uh, policy, human life, uh, human and wildlife conflict uh, policy. It's very clear that we have to sell some of these elephants. Now that we sold those elephants at a very cheaper price. How much is going to come to Mankumpi? Those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves from. Going back to the river is the same story. We have to make sure that every uh, house in Kavango, we have a river, we have aquifer underground water. We need to have potable water in every house. Yeah, every house must have potable water. Where in a, in a, in a, in a white community where you find a white lady with a bucket of water moving from, from whatever point to another point? Drilling is not enough. After drilling, pipes must move. To houses that's the only way we can care about these things maybe our women can't even have time to make themselves beautiful because they have to have, to have all the time just to transport water as if they are transport uh, 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 the transport for, for for water it's not right yeah we cannot still continue consuming water which is not well uh, for, for which is not which is not well for human consumption at all we need waters in every houses we need to make sure that people are, are educated people are benefiting from this crocodile it's about selling we sell Development must come directly to these people. People must have water. People must have everything that they need. If they have water in their houses, that's one way we're going even to kill many uh, problems with, 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 uh, like, uh, with one stone. Because every house is going to have a garden. Every house is going to have an orchard. They need to produce mangoes. Every house is going to, the malnutrition level is going to go down. If you even go to the hospitals, uh, uh, one of the, 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 the cause of mortality in the under fives are, are, are malnutrition. Which is not right. When we have water, we have uh, proper land. This is about leadership, management. It must start from there. Yes. Otherwise, with the issue of a crocodile to eat people, this is something that we can be able to keep completely. Oh. Even including the fishing part. People, this, this, this issue also of, of, of the ministry being very serious about about the, this policy of, 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 of fishing. Are people going to, to, to catch fish? It must also be re-looked at. Because people, they are now finding a way to go night time and catch fish these people we have been surviving using those fish so it's better to say let's give them maybe a, a certain period of time for them to catch fish when is this period where people uh, fish are breeding and stuff they need to stop then saying not at all unless you have to get the license now it's not everybody can access about whatsoever and developments about bringing choices to people do people at uh, let's say uh, people at, uh, at, at Ndongarinena, for example can they be able to to access this type of, of, of offices for them to get permit unless they have to come to Rundu. So, but they have the river there. Can you look at that? At least with the Minister of Agriculture, we have the, uh, the extension officers there. What about the Minister of Agriculture? They have, we have rivers there. You understand? At least get the councillor's office to come up with an idea of to say, let's have maybe somebody who's dealing with the fishery issue. At least somebody can be able to issue these licenses to people. At least from a certain period to a certain period, they have to catch fish. When they are done with that period, when, when they said, okay, this time the fish are breeding, they have to stop. To say okay let, let them breed first then we have a harvesting period that way it will be better yeah oh. water issue the consumption part and as well as the fishing part that's where the problem is we we survived even me i grew up catching fish selling them butter system they give us a cup of, of, of maize meal we give them fish that's how we survive now if you say people must not do that we have to control it like as if uh, it belongs to a certain individual then it becomes totally wrong but if he says because of maybe collecting money, levy and stuff to the for the for the regional for the regional council to have money, then it's another story. We need to come up with a strategy on how can our people do things. Okay. Yes. Mr. Jabba, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate very much. Yeah, I thank you too. Okay. Bye.
taking a look at the weather in the northeast, Rundu and Nkurunkuru are partly cloudy at the moment with skies clearing tomorrow. Spotty showers are expected from Thursday onwards. At Kongola, the weather is partly sunny and comfortable with the humidity picking up towards the end of the week. Katima is mostly sunny with showers expected over the weekend and at Kasani, partly cloudy conditions prevail for the rest of this week along with mild temperatures. That was it from the northeastern regions. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for another episode of Regional Radio same time tomorrow. Have a good day.